we are picturing you know christ lifted up on the cross bearing all our sins bearing all our griefs bearing all our infirmities bearing all our sicknesses bearing all our diseases that is what we see right now with the eyes of faith what do you see? Are you able to see Jesus Christ as your perfect substitute? Can you see Jesus Christ who his own self bearing all your sins? bearing all your infirmities bearing all your sicknesses bearing all the chastisement that you should have borne yourself all the chastisement that you deserve can you see jesus bearing all your all your discomforts bearing all your pain bearing all your griefs can you see jesus i want you to see Jesus with the eyes of faith tonight even your hurts your um, afflictions your infirmities he said the Bible says he bore all our sicknesses and our diseases where did he bear them on the tree my sickness listen there are certain sicknesses you are that you deserve there are certain infirmities that you deserve but you know what you don't have to have them because Jesus Christ, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, he bore all your sicknesses and diseases, even your griefs, your pain. He bore them because he bore your sins. If he bore your sins, everything associated with your sins, all the consequences of your sins, and your sinful nature Christ bore all of them where in his own body where on the tree where he was hung as a curse for us Bakuria so I want you to see the transference of your pain if you have been diagnosed whatever diagnosis that you have received whatever symptoms that you have that you see whatever pain that you are experiencing any kind of infirmity can you see with the eyes of your faith jesus christ bearing them can you see the transference the transference of your sins unto jesus can you see i give you the scripture he was made a sin offering God sent his son in that what the law could not do, what the law could not do, what the law could not do because of the weakness of the flesh, because the, of the weakness of the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and he sent him as a sin offering. In other words, Jesus was intentionally made a sin offering by the Father. A sin offering is your substitute that receive a transference of your sins. Not just your sins, church, but also all your sicknesses and diseases. Tonight, release your faith to see that transference of not just your sins, but also your sickness and diseases. Pastor, how do I know this? The Bible says he bore all our sicknesses and carried away our diseases. In Isaiah it says, carried away your sorrows. He was bruised, 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 bruised for your iniquities. He was wounded, wounded, wounded for your transgressions. And that's why the Bible says in Psalm 103, 
he forgives all my sins and he let me of all my diseases sin and sickness they go together eh? forgiveness and healing they go together they you know where there's forgiveness you are you have every right to also appropriate healing because god doesn't just forgive god also heals forgiveness means that you are also justified and he that is justified he is redeemed from the curse of the law so i'm imploring you i'm encouraging you tonight that your eyes be opened it's also a prayer your eyes be opened to see the transference to see how the lord has you know removed from your account all your sins all your iniquities all your transgressions all your trespasses all your errors all your mistakes and the corresponding curses the corresponding consequences the corresponding condemnation in the form of sickness in the form of diseases in the form of infirmities in the form of um, 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 dis dysfunctionality of any part of your being Jesus also took them they were transferred to him so tonight we join our faith together you say you join your faith with Robert's faith standing on the powerful indisputable efficacy of the truth of the gospel that declares that he forgives all my sins that is Jesus and heals me of all my infirmities standing on the eternal truth of the gospel that declares that he bore my sicknesses. He bore, say it with me, Jesus bore my sicknesses. Jesus bore my diseases. Jesus carried my griefs and my sorrows such that I don't have to bear them. And that is why it is written. Say after me, it is written, he himself, bore my sicknesses my diseases my sins and my trespasses he himself in his own body on the cross so that i not just i just mentioned all of us and every member of our families so that we are dead to sin we are dead to sickness we are dead to Satan. We are dead to sorrow. We are dead to serpentine bites. We are dead to all this. And we are alive in righteousness and unto righteousness. We are alive unto the blessedness and the blessings of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Bible says that you are justified unto life justification is the legitimate judicial premise for you to have life life is a condition that is without sickness and diseases life removes filters out sicknesses and diseases infirmities and all kinds of malfunction of either your body or any of your faculties burubenda karabahoti giriandoro gosegeteria boroto bartakatangeria nurikete gurebo i can see sickness being removed from your body because of the gospel i'm proclaiming i can see the sicknesses being shocked out like vacuum cleaner i see this gospel like a powerful spiritual vacuum cleaner. What is being vacuum cleaned? 
your whole body, your whole life is being vacuum cleaned. What is being cleaned out? Every infirmity, every sickness, every disease, every malfunction, every wrong, every diagnosis of wrong function, functions in your body, every pain, every uh, uh, um, growth that should not be in your body, like tumors, like fibroids, and all that. Burube tekeria gataya, makuria gatangabu, arabakutu, mekurianda yakabara, jeke degeria. So can you see a transference? A transference. Can you see it? Say, Lord, help me to see. Open the eyes of my understanding that I may see Christ Jesus bearing all my sins and carrying away my, bearing all my sicknesses and carrying away my infirmities. Buroten dakute gerigatara araba shataya akarabu karabu 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 barababa garababa bakudu gerigataya yende kuto gerigataya arabu shoto gerigataya makuria in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah 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 Okay Hallelujah I'm excited I'm excited Amen. I'm excited. You know why? You are serving eviction notice. Whatever the sickness, whatever is every sickness, they've given it name. We don't even care about the name. If it is sickness, if it is a malfunction in your body or a wrong growth in your body, it just has to go because Christ bore them. Christ bore them. He carried away. He took it away. And so we're insisting, standing on the efficacy, standing on the efficacy of the word of the Lord. You know, and understand. So when we speak this, then there's a mighty suction power that is applied upon your life to suck out every infirmity, every sickness, every disease, every malfunction, and every wrong growth. Whether it's tumor, whether it's fibroid, whether it's cyst, whether it is cancer, anything that is growing wrongly in your body will be sucked out tonight because we are releasing our faith in nothing but the pure quintessential gospel. And guess what? The gospel is the power of God's salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's start today by acknowledging that the healing of God is holistic. I want you to say, Father, I thank you for holistic healing. Emotional healing, psychological healing, and physical healing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Some of us, we are more concerned about our headache, about our blood pressure, about our sugar level, about our, um, uh, uh, um, you know, maybe your sight, maybe your whatever. But there's more to that. There's a deeper healing that God will accomplish tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bakuria Katara. Zekutuguria. Dekuria Gatagaba. Makuria Gataka. Boturia. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, look at what the Bible says. Eh? It says, let me read. It says, My son, attend to my words and um, hide them in your heart. Let them not depart from your eyes. Why? Because it says, my word is life to those that find them. My word is life. It's life. And what word? The word of Christ. Am I making sense? The word of Christ. Bakuri Basare. Let me, hold on. Let me just add one or two. Um co-hosts 
Mama, is it okay if I make you a co host? Okay. Alright. Um, Sister Master, is it okay if I make you a co host? Yes, okay. yes, Master. Yes. Yeah. Um, please bear with me, everyone. I'm making this broadcast from the car because I came to drop somebody. I came to drop somebody at the airport. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Um, no, no, don't worry. Okay. Okay. All right, so Sister Master, you help me, yeah? Right. Okay. no problem. Thank you very much. All right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the word, if you find the word, the Bible says is life to you. See, when you receive life, life neutralizes sickness. Life makes you whole. Life ministers wholeness to you. Not just physically, but emotionally. Not just emotionally, even psychologically. Life ministers wholeness. That's the whole essence of life. And so, when we find the word of Christ, it, it ministers life to us. A good example is just the word I've declared, declared to you. It says, he himself bore all our sins. But not just our sins. It's not possible for Jesus Christ to just bear your sins. He bore your sins and the consequence of your sins, which is which includes sickness, which includes disease. Sickness and disease. Am I making sense? Sickness. When Jesus Christ bore your sins on that cross, Bible says he was bruised for your iniquities. Bible says he was wounded for your transgressions. So it's not just bearing sin. He received bruises. He received wounds. He received stripes. <clears throat> and those stripes, Bible says, it is by those stripes you and I have been healed. So I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, tonight we're not laboring. We're simply resting in the perfect finished work of redemption that includes healing, that includes forgiveness of sins, that includes justification, that includes a redemption from every curse, that includes a redemption from under the law, that includes an extrication from the law of sin and death, that includes sickness and diseases. Burate Burkataya. So we are standing on the efficacy of that word. We are standing, say, I'm standing on the finished work of redemption. I'm standing on the finished work of justification. I'm standing on the finished work of cleansing, forgiveness, and sanctification. I'm standing on the finished work whereby I became buried with Christ, wherein I'm also risen together with him. I made a new creature in the image of Christ that has no sickness or no, no disease, no infirmity, no malfunction. That is what we are standing on tonight. We are not laboring. We are resting in the assurance of the perfect finished work of redemption, of salvation, of justification, of healing, of wholesomeness that Christ has achieved for you and for me and for all members of our families. This is truth. This is not a lie. No sickness has the right to remain in your body. No sickness has the right to continue in your body. No, there's no right. They have no right. There's no judicial basis because Bible says by the stripes Christ received, you and I, we have already been healed. The healing necessary for you and for me has been accomplished. So we receive the healing package. We enforce the healing package and we charge every malfunction 
every infirmity, every affliction to be removed from us. Christ sucks them out of our being. And therefore, they have no right to be in us. Whether it is emotional hurt, whether it's emotional infirmity or psychological infirmity, whatever it is, listen to me. Your healing is concluded. Your healing is perfected. Your healing is being paid for. Your healing, God sent his son to take away sickness from you. Christ demanded for all your sickness to be put upon him. Christ received it and he carried it away from you. You are not the bearer of sickness. Jesus bore all our infirmities. He carried your griefs, your sickness, your disease, anything that is classified as disease, anything that is contrary to your well-being, anything that is contrary to your wholesomeness. Jesus took away those things and he bought them legitimately in his body. So it will be contravening the law of double jeopardy if you are still carrying sickness that Jesus Christ took. So tonight we're insisting standing on the truth of that word of the finished work of redemption and of healing. I call it work of healing because he took your sicknesses. He took your diseases. It is, he did not declare it is finished until every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every plague had been put upon him. Only then did he say it is finished. And to prove to you that it is finished, when he died, he was buried. And he rose from the dead. He couldn't have risen from the dead if there were still outstanding curses in the form of sickness or disease. Okay, so tonight, I want us to go back to this word. He says, he that findeth the, those, his, the word of Christ, the word of the gospel, the word of redemption, he says, it is life to him. And say tonight, say it, tonight, I declare the word of the gospel. I believe it and I confess it. Say, I believe in my heart that God the Father raised Christ from the dead. That mere truth is a clear, indisputable confirmation that I'm a new creation recreated in image of Christ without sickness or disease. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Righteousness is a reality because of justification. Justification is a case of all my sins wiped off. As a result, I receive a discharge, an acquittal. And because I'm discharged and acquittal, I receive the gift of righteousness. And because I receive the gift of righteousness, I have the gift of life. And because I have the gift of life, no sickness or disease is permitted to find expression in my emotions, in my heart, or in my body, or in any of my, my faculties. Sekuriatara. Neturbahande. Pembrusukutukurikatangabanda gura. Yuriada. Darabasaka da garikaturia. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's move to another scripture. I just want you to, to speak it out because this is the truth. When you speak the truth, then liberation begins to take place. You know the truth, and that truth you know will affect a, a liberation, will affect deliverance. You shall know the truth, and the truth liberates you from the shackles of sickness, from the shackles of disease and infirmities. And what is the truth? The truth here is that which Jesus Christ has declared. I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I'm in agreement with your word. I acknowledge your, your will. I acknowledge the, the counsel in your heart 
that I be in health and every member of my family we are in health and not in sickness not in disease not in infirmities are you understanding so say it I agree with Pastor Robert I agree with every member of this platform stand in one accord and unite our faith and speak with the same voice we agree with the word of God, the counsel in the heart of God, that we all, without exception, we are in health. No matter, there's no reason for us to be outside of health. So on the premise of the message of God, speaking on our behalf in this hour, on the premise of our faith in the word of the gospel, we declare that each and every one of us, we are in health. We prosper and we're in health even as our soul prospers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All right, let me read another scripture to you. And that scripture says, a sound heart, a sound, you all know this scripture, is the life of the flesh. Hey, kuribotoria. The life of the flesh proceeds or is the outcome of a sound heart. It, I, are you making that? This is Proverbs fourteen twenty. A sound heart is is the life of the flesh. I told you before that word sound, eh? Sound is from the Hebrew word called mape, mape, and mape is a noun, clearly indicating three things: health, healing, and remedy. Am I making sense? Health healing and remedy and it refers specifically the, its reference is to restoration it's to cure cure and it's to remedy of any sickness or any, or any illness any sickness or any illness a mape heart please understand me understand me and understand the scriptures a mape heart is the life of the flesh so where the root place where you need healing in other words a healed heart a remedied heart a healthy heart is the life of the flesh church are you are, are we together do you understand what i'm saying so if your heart is not healthy or is not remedied or is not cured from what Pastor Robert, from what? What? What is my heart healed from? So many things. Some people are still hurting in their hearts. What kind of hurt are they having? I'm going to explain that to you. Some people are are, are still uh, they still have scars because of past experiences, whatever has happened in the past. Whatever has happened in the past is still affecting them, and so. There's hurt. There's hurt in their hearts, and there are lots of reasons which we'll outline and we'll address them with the word of God. Um, number one, the major problem with many hearts today that are not healed is hearts that have not received love. The, the hearts that are conditioned um, outside of love. So we call them unloved unloved hearts they have not experienced love so they are devoid of love as a result of being devoid of love they are finding love in different ways so some people some people have been subjected to different kinds of abuse like hatred they've experienced they've experienced a lot of hatred they've also experienced a lot of judgment judgmentalism they've experienced a lot of condemnation just just think of it just think think of it you being born and all through the years you've grown or in certain phases of your life you, you were brought up under an atmosphere of hatred you are brought up under an atmosphere of crit high level criticism high level judgmentalism high level um um rejection maybe you've even suffered rejection from the people that are meant to care and love you you are suffering you've suffered rejection and maybe you've gone through experiences of being despised 
you have gone through experiences of being put down where you have lacked you've lacked affirmation you have not had any form of affirmation it's all been criticism it's all been judgmentalism it's all been condemnation can you imagine how that kind of heart is that heart becomes damaged and needs health needs healing listen to me for some people it is actually impossible for them to conceive what is called unconditional love and that is what every heart needs every heart needs to be brought into you know the um uh, atmosphere of unconditional love some people they don't know it they can't imagine it to them is all is is far-fetched unconditional love people are used to conditional love and that is why it's a problem now look at what the bible says let me tell you what the bible says because right now this is i'm ministering healing now so for some of us we probably need internal healing I, let me tell you how do you know I, you need internal healing from some of your outward manifestations some of your outward behavior your outward outward responses the, the 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 outward conduct of your life is a could be a sign that you need some internal healing inside of you and tonight god also wants to heal our hearts so look at what the bible says let's address this issue of a uh, an unloved heart and most times an unloved heart becomes unlovable so that even when you want to start loving them because they are used to being unloved then they are, they are not in a position to receive love is is that making sense so look at what the bible says look at what the bible says hearing is love it says not that we love god not that that's unconditional not that we loved god but that he loved you think of it let's feed on his love he loved me not because i loved him not because i had anything to offer but that is his nature his nature is to love and he can't help it the, the god is constrained and confined to love in fact let me tell you if you want to say one thing that's impossible with god is god it is impossible for god not to love so i want you to note that now it says but that not that we loved him but that he loved us and he demonstrated his love in a way that nobody can ever dispute it how he he what did he do he sent his son he sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins hey pat oh, church just, just think about it just think about i have no part in it you know what it means to to be the propitiation of our sins every debt d-e-b-t every consequence every penalty every chastisement every curse that is that we deserve because of our sins jesus christ paid it that is why you we call him the propitiation of our sins how did jesus become the propitiation of our sins of our sins it is because of the love of god for you not that you loved him he loved you and demonstrated that love by sending his own son to be the propitiation of your sins let's just say just imagine some of you are owing debt some of you maybe you have credit cards that are uh, um, debt on credit cards loans um different things and you just wake up one morning one morning and somebody calls you on the phone and tells you can i have a list of any debt in your name consider it paid not just any debt in your name any future debt you might even incur any future debt that might come up in the future against you just consider it paid just think of it i didn't do anything i didn't try to please him he just loved me and sent his son to be the, be the propitiation of my sins. church that's unconditional love and that is something we need to feed on you feed on it if you don't feed on it then satan will show you evidence that you are unloved and when you start feeling unloved that is the beginning of a damaged heart your heart feels begin to feel damaged 
your heart is hurt your heart becomes me in need of healing am i making sense okay look at another scripture just to confirm this thing i'm saying this thing so that our hearts can receive healing our hearts can receive the comfort of his love the succor of the love of god so that any heart here that is still feeling unloved and acting and like there's no love that love doesn't exist they to from today you're receiving a kind of healing because you are beginning to hear the word of the gospel of christ wherein he loved you look at another scripture in romans 5 8 it says god commended god directed god channeled god you know commanded his love toward robert honor call your name call your name god commanded god commended god directed god commissioned his love toward robert i became an object of love oh pastor my parents never loved me my siblings never loved me nobody really seemed to love me my spouse doesn't seem to show any care for me wait 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 forget about all this forget about the love of man because no man can ever love you with the pure love of god so the first love you need is the love of the father you just think about it don't take it for granted please think about it you were a sinner yet god identified you to be the object of his love you are in fact you are not just a sinner you are enmity with god in fact the bible says why we are yet sinners christ died for us okay christ died for us okay that's it that's the ultimate but while we were yet sinners suddenly we came to realize that we're actually the object of god's affection hey god had a crush on us jesus he had a crush on us and he proved it by sending his son he didn't he didn't even talk to you he didn't even, he didn't even you know come to you to say he just went ahead and did it because he had a crush on you he liked you he had an affection for you you are the object of his hidden love and but he brought it out to the open by sending his son he sent his son can you imagine he sent his son why did he die because he needed to retrieve redeem your life from destruction he needed to prepare you to be able to come into fellowship with him so all the the the, the curses you deserved the punishment you deserved the judgment you deserved the destruction you deserve. He asked his son to go and take your place and receive all those things you deserve so that he can become your lover. Rabba, hey, just imagine. You are the object of divine love. You are the affection of the love of God, the creator of the universe. God has commended his love to you, Robert Onwara. God has commended his love to you. Those of you that before you probably got married or whatever, when your spouse came to you and began to commend their love towards you and started sending you flowers and started sending you gifts, do you know what? For some of you, you became really excited. You became alive. Something woke up in you. Oh, I have become the object of somebody's love, especially if you love the person back. That is what happened to you. So let us allow our hearts to be to be healed. Don't allow the devil to deceive you, to think that, you know what, you are abandoned, you are rejected, nobody cares for you, nobody loves you. Mm -hmm. Tell him, I am the object of God's love. While I was even a sinner, God commended his love unto me and demonstrated it by sending his son to die for me. And then look at what he says also. He says, for if, when you were an enemy, when you were an enemy, you know, your posture, your lifestyle, your disposition, your 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 actions everything about you seem to prove without any doubt with indisputable evidence that you're an enemy of god yet you've been an enemy of god you were reconciled to him in other words he still reconciled you to himself how by the death of his son um it's difficult to get your head around this kind of love it sounds like fiction but it's true you are an enemy yet god himself took the initiative to reconcile you and take away that thing that constituted 
enmity between you and him and sent his son to die for you and in that dying there was reconciliation is that not love which other love do you want greater than that eh so that so now now the question now listen listen what applies to you now now that you are reconciled now that you are justified eh just imagine how it will be bible says you are guaranteed salvation in any circumstance any situation for you that should be the primary concern of your heart i was an enemy god initiated reconciliation now i'm reconciled god is guaranteeing you that by his life you will always be saved you know what the bible says he says whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that we may be the firstborn among many brethren church listen to me let your heart be healed because the healed heart the healthy heart is the life of the flesh so if your heart is healed then you are healed emotionally if you are hurting emotionally or you are hurting psychologically because you have been subject to different kinds of abuse yes one of the things that really touched me yesterday i listened to someone this person is very young and the father is the father is probably um um close to well over 90 because the father gave birth to her or had her when he was quite old there was no relationship with, between them and he never really wanted that so she never knew. in fact the father rejected her and abandoned her so that that pain she lived with that pain and when she got to you know um to the university guess what she was looking for love and do you know who she ended up with she ended up with a man who was seven years older than her but that man was abusing her. That man used to physically abuse her. In other words, as in beating her. Beating her with, with um, the rod of curtains. Kicking her, punching her. And you know what? She said that after he beats her, he will buy her the kind of things she likes. He will buy her those things. And, but she said she loved him. She loved him so much that she couldn't do without him. Now, you see what she's going through? She's going through, because she uh, she was offended and hurt, her father abandoned her, her father rejected her. She's not looking for love. Where has she, her, where has she not found love? With an abuser. And she cannot extricate from herself, herself from that abuser. As far as she's concerned, there's nothing more. That's the best. But she still loved the man. <laughs> she still loved the man. So, eventually, they split. She now found, got into another relationship. This new relationship, listen to me what I'm about to tell you. This man does not abuse her. And because the man does not abuse her, she just found out that I don't seem to like this man. The man was showing her a lot of kindness. She just didn't feel that this was the right man for her. Because she's used to abuse. She's just, she's a her, she has a damaged heart. A heart that is so malfunctioning that it's, it's comfortable only with abuse. Listen to me. We don't know how our hearts are. But honestly speaking, the only person that can heal our heart is Christ. Through his love. When we receive his love, eh, then our hearts are healed. The healed heart, the healthy heart, the remedied heart is the life of the flesh. I hear, I hear what I'm saying. Some people, their problem is rejection. Some people, their problem is abandonment. And because they have that problem of rejection and abandonment you know what they have all kinds of strange manifestations and response but i don't want you to feel that because you know what the bible says the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 it says that we are praised unto him because he has accepted us in the beloved you accepted your parents might have rejected you your spouse might have rejected you men might have rejected you and abandoned you to the point that you're always scared of abandonment and you're always you're too dependent on people you and any relationship you get into you are too dependent on it so if whether they abuse you they do anything you are too dependent because you are afraid of being a, a abandoned listen to me fear not 
the most important acceptance you need in this world is the acceptance of Christ. Can you imagine? You are a sinner. You are an enemy. Yet, somebody has accepted you. How do I know that he accepted me? Because the Bible says, I'm accepted in the beloved. But what is the evidence that I'm accepted? You know what? What the evidence is? He justified me. In other words, every sin that will have separated me from him, he has wiped it off by sending his son to bear the consequence and the punishment of those sins. So right now, not just as he has accepted, as he has accepted me, he is begging for me. He's begging me, draw nigh, draw nigh. He says, let us therefore draw nigh unto him. He says, come ye boldly to the throne of grace. He says, don't you know that you have, um, 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 through the blood, he has brought us nigh unto himself. He says that you should come. He says, how did the Bible say it now? He says, knowing that we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood. God wants you. God is calling you. You're no longer rejected. Listen to me. The creator of the universe, the glorious king of kings and lord of lords, has accepted you and is calling forth for you. Come, please come, come, come. I don't care who's saying, I don't want you, robot. I reject you, robot. I, 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 listen to me. Many of you have been trying to show people love, trying to show gesture of friend, friendship. And people are rejecting you. People are not accepting you. They, they, they're just, you know, despising you. Hmm. Whatever their reason is. That's their problem. The important thing is that God loves you, God accepts you, and God is drawing you to himself. And you know what he's using to draw you? His loving kindness. He's using his loving kindness to draw you to himself. Listen to me. Just think of that bubble, the bubble of salvation, the bubble of agape love. Don't allow the devil to take you outside of that. Because if he takes you to yourself and to the flesh, you will think all kinds of horrible thoughts. You'll be pitying yourself. You'll be asking why me. You'll be asking why has this happened. If you feed on those things, that is exactly what is damaging your heart. But he says the healed heart. You know, am I making sense? Okay. So yes. these are the things we need. We, 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 say that again. We are lost in your preaching. Karaba Hadekeria. You see the reality of it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, now listen to me, church. That's one aspect of a damaged heart. Eh? That's one aspect of a damaged heart. Listen to me. For some of you, Part of your damage is that people have disappointed you. People have come to you. They are promising all kinds of things. All of a sudden, they disappoint you. You have what they call a broken heart because of disappointment. You are disappointed in the place of love. That is exactly why the love of Christ is so important to feed upon it. The love of Christ is like vitamin C. It has a way of effecting repair in damaged hearts. There are all kinds of damages that the heart experiences. And the way to know that you have a deep hurt, a deep um, damage inside of your heart, it manifests in how you react. Yeah? Am I making sense? It manifests in how you behave, how you conduct your life and all that. And um, But today, be rest assured, always remember, don't forget this expression I'm going to use. I am the object of divine affection. Nothing can be higher than that. Am I making sense? Okay. The second major aspect of a damaged heart is a heart that is in bondage of guilt, in bondage of regret, in bondage of condemnation. Why? Because of how you have been what you have been subjected to without you knowing some of us we have we don't have any parental figure that is a, a good reflection of love some of us let me tell you some of us you had mothers that never had what it takes to show motherly love you had mothers that never you you, do, you don't understand what cuddle affirmation cases hugs you don't that you never had it oh some people may say well i had a very diligent mother i had a very faithful mother 
oh, she was faithful in giving us food, she was faithful in taking care of us, faithful in clean, cleaning us, uh, tidying our rooms, da, 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 da. That is different. That's just, she's just carrying out her du motherly duties. But when it comes to motherly love, it means that you are, she, you are like, she's like your, not just mother, she becomes like a friend. She knows how to, you know, the body touch, the affection directly into you, can discuss things with you. That helps to do something to the heart. It helps them to do, it, it, because God wants to condition your heart so that your heart is conditioned in love. Unfortunately, you don't have that condition for your heart to be conditioned in love. Same, so they have that problem with their mother. They also have the problem with their father. This lady, I give you a testimony of her mother had mental health issues. So right from the time of her birth, you know, time of her birth, her mother was removed from her. So she doesn't, she never received motherly care. And then her father was rejecting her. And that's why she started to enjoy. In fact, any relationship is now, she was saying it. I watched this on YouTube. She was saying any relationship and I don't have that abuse and physical abuse. It, it feels odd to me. In fact, now she's about to get married, and when she saw her husband's family, how they loved each other, how her husband, uh, no, not her husband, fiancé, her fiancé uh, parents will call him, how are you doing, and all that. Her fiancé siblings will call him, how are you doing. Meanwhile, she said, she never, it was never her experience. How, somebody, how can somebody be calling you? Your mom is calling you, how are you, how are you, how are you, how are you doing? It's, in fact, she said that when she received phone calls, she gets a bit um, apprehensive because she's not used to phone calls. So when she saw this happening with her fears to be, wow, it, it's, wow, so this is what I missed. Let me tell you, eh, this is just an example. This is just one ex extreme example. But somehow, the devil subjects us to conditions that creates damage in the heart. Some people have experienced a lot of physical verbal abuse, not just physical abuse, verbal abuse emotional abuse. You know what abuse is? Abuse is to violate the proper use of anything. So, instead of you receiving love, you're probably receiving manipulation, verbal abuse, curses. You know this lady I'm talking to you about? Today, she said that eh, she can't do without cursing. Even her fiance, she curses him. Why? Because of the condition of her heart. But God wants to heal us today. I don't know the condition of each other's heart. But I'm telling you the truth that we all need healing in our hearts. And a healthy heart, it is only the redemptive work of Christ. Bible says, who through the eternal spirit, by his own accord, by his own volition, offered himself to God with, you know, with a body that was spotless for you and for me. Just imagine, he's doing that. He says, that offering has the ability to purge your heart of dead works. So let's receive the healing that God has ordained for our hearts. You know what Bible says? There's a circumcision that takes place in our heart. That circumcision is not the circumcision of the hand, but it's the circumcision that is of Christ. And what he cuts off is the foreskin of your heart. He sanctifies your heart and gives you a healthy, remedied, cured heart. And that healthy, remedied, cured heart becomes the life of the flesh. A healthy heart is a heart that you have taken away guilt from. A healthy heart is a heart that has been expunged of condemnation. A healthy heart is a heart that has been expunged of every sense and feeling of shame. A healthy heart is a heart that's been expunged of everything that speaks of bitterness and offense. Those things are expunged from the heart. A healthy heart is a sound heart, is a tranquil heart, is a, a, a heart, a heart that is, you know, saturated with the sense of righteousness, with the, you know, robust feeling, um, uh, peace of Christ. And the joy of the Holy Spirit. So tonight, uh, in, uh, I wish we had some kind of worship. To maybe, maybe some people playing music, and then we we'll just allow, you know, worship the anointing of the worship to flow deep into the depths of our souls. 
because truly speaking for many of us our healing requirement is deeper than what the eyes see it's not just physical there is something deeper that god wants to do healing you on deep 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 level and i'm telling you even just trust that the words were spoken tonight it is possible for you to receive healing am i making sense i'm not talking about physical healing listen to me it's guaranteed arthritis irritable bowel syndrome strange growths in your body pain diabetes all these things are guaranteed but God wants to go deeper and deeper because truly speaking, if you can be healed deeply inside of you, sometimes you might just discover that your physical ailments, they just disappear. They just disappear. Anything that has hurt you, any hurt, any damage of the heart is very important that it's healed. That's why the Bible says we should guard our hearts with all diligence. The things that proceed from the heart they are issues of life. The mape heart, the sound heart, the healthy heart, the healing heart, the remedied heart is the life of the flesh. Bow down your heads. Bako to Gurigataria, Maturba Shaka Dagarika Turba Saragatura, Makuriba Bakutu Gurigaturia. I want you to feed, feed, feed on the kindness of God, feed on His tenderness. His tender love, His mercies, just feed on them. They, are, they have the ability to bring healing to the depths of your heart. Just imagine that you are God's, God's focus is upon you. Just imagine that God's affection is towards you. Just imagine that you are the one that brings joy and delight to you. Can you just, just think of this expression. Robert Honora is the object of divine delight. Mama, do you have um, um, communion? So, Guri Bahata Dari, Makurian Dari Katagaba, Jaka Dagaragaturu Basaragaturia. Just imagine, you are the object of divine delight. Hey, so me, me, Robert, Robert, I bring delight. I bring delight to the heart of the Father. How? Me, me, tiny me. How can I cause delight in the heart of the creator of the universe? Because you are in Christ Jesus. Because you are in Christ Jesus. Because, and that's the truth. I'm not joking. I'm not saying this in, to hype you about. This is hardcore truth. The devil doesn't want you to know. Just lift up your voice and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord. All ye around me. I, Robert Honora, and every member of my family. Because we're in Christ. We are the object of divine delight. We're the object of his affection. We're the ones he has commended his love unto. We are the ones he has accepted in the beloved. We are the ones he's calling forth to draw nigh unto him. We are the ones that will be loved unconditionally and eternally by him. In other words, you will never be without love. You will ever be loved. You, will, you just imagine. You just imagine that you're the object of love. Okay, just just put yourself in in the in the in the position of a woman and your husband loves you to bits and every time he comes he cuddles you he kisses you darling what do you want he gets you what you want he arranges things for you he buys you gifts he sends you flowers he's just calling on you he's just, just imagine how you will be love is health it's ministering health to you so that is a man let me tell you a man doing that <laughs> there's no man that has the capacity to show agape love God's love is more superior. God's love is more genuine. God loves. God love has an unconditionality that is very difficult for the human mind to comprehend. And let me tell you, God's love is not theoretical. God's love is practical. If you can declare it regularly, I am the beloved of, of Abba. I'm the beloved of my father. I'm the object of his affection. I'm the object of his delight. I'm the one he's commending all his kindness unto. His loving kindness, his tender message, they're all directed at me. I am that focus, God's focus of attention, wherein he is directing and commending every, all of his tender 
mercies, all of his kindness, all of his goodness. I am the object of his goodness. I'm the recipient. They're all meant for me. Can you imagine? He has so much love and he's lavishing his love upon me. He's unleashing his love upon me. Bekuto kurigataria. Arabohoto kurigatongo bundarigataria. Pur sataya. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The body of Christ was broken for you and for me. The body of Christ. God incarnate in the flesh. Is the perfect token of God's love for me. It. Close your eyes. And think. God opened my eyes to not just see and acknowledge but to understand to perceive your true love for me we are saying thank you Jesus that's what's coming to me we are saying thank you Jesus thank you our God from tonight, I prophesy to you that the liquid love of Christ flows into every aspect of your being. And that essence of his love, tangible essence of his love, touches every part of you that is damaged, every part of you that is hurting, Every part of you that is um, disfigured or, 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 or affected wrongly so that wholesomeness can be restored to you. The essence of his love that is tangible begin to rub off on every aspect of you that is hurting or life has damaged, especially in the heart that from today you discover a completely sanctified heart a heart completely circumcised a wholesome heart in the mighty name of jesus christ a mape heart in the mighty name of jesus christ a heart that has you know um, um, the, is affected by god's restorative power in the mighty name of jesus christ a heart read of offense, a heart read of bitterness, a heart read of unforgiveness, a heart read of com uh, condemnation, a heart read of all toxic negative emotions, a heart that is pure, a heart that is pulsating with agape love. For that heart is the life of the flesh. And tonight, as we have eaten of the body of Christ broken for us, we are receiving the deepest healing ever. Say amen. Touch my hand and say, Pastor, I'm in agreement with you. Pastor, I'm in agreement with you. In agreement with you, Pastor. The deepest healing that I'm not even aware of, I receive the essence, the uh, uh, ointment of the love of Christ into the depths of my heart that will bring perfect healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just me, but all my children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know that you as a parent, the way you handle your children, if care is not taken, it can damage their hearts. And so we're declaring that all our children are also healed. Not just physically, but they are healed emotionally. They are healed psychologically that our children are emotionally and psychologically sound in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is no defect in their emotions or no defect in their psychology, no defect in their physicality in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's drink the blood. This is a cup of the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. The blood by which we are redeemed from the curse of the law. The blood by which we are sanctified. The blood that grants us unhindered access into the holiest. The blood that, you know, justifies us completely and totally. We drink of this blood and we say through the same blood, 
we have been enjoined to become legitimate partakers of the new and the everlasting testament let us drink as we drink of this blood we see that our consciences are purged and we obtain perfect hearts tonight in jesus name amen i want you to just be silent for with your eyes closed don't talk just fix your attention upon the scripture that declares that says while we are yet sinners God commended while I was yet a sinner God commended his love to me and what did he do he sent his son to die for me that I might be reconciled unto him I want your attention to be on this scripture that says hearing his love not that we loved him but he loved me and sent his son to be the propitiation of Robert's sins God said God foreknew me and God predestinated me I had no impulse he foreknew me and he pursued me and made me the object of his love and predestinated me to not just be redeemed but to come into perfect conformity with the image of his son Jesus for the Bible says whom he did for know he predestinated whom he did predestinate what did the Bible say he called him whom he called he justified and he whom he justified he glorified Bakuria, that's me God foreknew me God predestinated me to come into perfect conformity with this image of his son so that he can love me and I can come into intimate fellowship with him and he called me he justified me he, that's he he did it I didn't I have no he called me he foreknew me he predestinated me he called me he justified me and he is the one glorifying me church what can you have better than that say thank you Jesus thank you for miracle healing I wake up tomorrow morning many of you strength comes upon you you snap out of every melancholy snap out of every despondency snap out of every self pity snap out of every um, sorrow snap out of everything compromising your liberty and your joy because now you realize how much God loves you. Now the next thing we are going to believe God is that um, I, I can't read it now but it's, I think it's in Ephesians chapter 2 that we start seeing the kindness of God manifesting in your life. The goodness of God unleashed upon you. The mercies of God in this indisputably evidently manifest in your life. Because now you are acknowledging with the eyes of faith the love of God for you not your